I was in TMI's live stream earlier just to see what horse shit he was talking about. I, he was literally just talking about stupid shit. Um, didn't even make sense, but I was in there and kept, kept flooding his chat, asking him if he'd please tell us what was said in the shareholder meeting since he was there. <laughs> I was like, hey, what's up, man? Just trying to trying to get some info on what happened at the shareholder meeting. It was like the proxy was very specific that if you wanted to attend, you had to go to Kansas that weekend and actually go to the headquarters. And seeing as how all five of you went there, I, I can only assume, you know, you were in Kansas the weekend of the shareholder meeting so that you could attend it. I just kept asking, are you going to give anyone any information or is it like you were told you couldn't? And I know he read it. I could tell when he read it because he just stopped talking. <laughs> and like for just a minute stopped talking and then read the fucking question and undermined. <laughs> I was like, all right, whatever. But the good thing was there was a couple people that were like, hey, yeah, that's actually a really good question. <laughs> I was just like, now nah, y'all are thinking, and like not even five minutes later, he fucking jetted out, he shut down the stream, which was strange, but, you know, tis what it is, <laughs> so, I just want to do a quick lesson, a hypothetical lesson, uh, in proper laddering of a short squeeze using a gamma squeeze in the event you know like you ever hypothetically found yourself in a scenario with an underlying that was prime for a short squeeze uh, it doesn't get discussed enough because short squeezes aren't you know a common theme that happens in the stock market but when they do happen, you know, if you do happen to come across one ever in, in your days of trading, uh, it's a nice little tidbit of knowledge to have because this is what hedge funds do. This is literally what they do to ladder down. <coughs> it's how they screw you over with puts just the opposite way. Like a... <laughs> A reverse gamma squeeze. <laughs> it's just simply called unhedging. <laughs> uh, oh man, this shit makes me laugh. Anyway, um, it was it was shocking to me uh, when I used to watch the live streamers before June. Uh, when they were trying to teach people everything and explain charting and technical analysis and all that. And no one anywhere uh, wanted to talk about, you know, how you would ladder a stock in a particular situation, even hypothetically. You know, not telling you what to do or whatever, but uh, let's just say that, like, stock XYZ had super duper high short interest a lot of short shares that were outstanding and you're in like the 10 to 14 dollar range floating around um if you really wanted to kickstart that bad boy and there was enough intelligent investors also in this play uh you would purchase a lot of your contracts in the money and you would do it deeper in the money like if it was sitting at $13 you would buy 10 or $11 contracts and uh, you depending on how many contracts you buy you would want to start exercising those contracts at least half of them it would force automatic hedging for one um, then you would also naturally get your shares, but 
the automatic hedging when all of these in the money contracts were being purchased it it forces hedging it forces the stock price to move up so say that stock xyz had like the highest strike it had was forty dollars hypothetically <laughs> And a bunch of people, a whole bunch, I mean, so many, it was just like the highest open interest was at that, that $40 strike. Um, when you see high open interest like that, uh, you, you can't just cross your fingers and pray that, you know, you get to that date with that strike price, you know, the stock above that strike price. Um, you need to help it get there. So, you know, people start buying more in the money contracts, 10, 11, 12, whatever, starts pushing the stock higher. Um, if you got 14 and 15s that have been purchased because the stock was floating around $10 and a lot of people like to play out of the money calls, you know, once you hit that, they're going to get hedged for. And it's going to drive the price up. And then all the ones you had at 20, once you cap out at 20, somewhere between 18, 50, and 20, they're most likely going to hedge, um, depending on how close you are to the expiration date. But if you are if you hit that price, given this scenario at the time, um, assuming there's no nefarious crap going on, uh, those are going to get hedged for. And it probably going to push the stock price up even further pushing towards 30 um, and if you have enough buying pressure coupled with all of those contracts uh, once you hit that 40 with huge just huge open interest um, when all of those get hedged for because once it hits that 38 to 40 dollar target um, Especially if it happens in like the pre-market or something, the the market makers are going to hedge for those bad boys, and like it, it, if it's got significant open interest, it could easily shoot that stock up, stock X Y Z up to like sixty-five, seventy dollars or more from there if it's got that much open interest, and then if that happened, and you're sitting pretty. You know, with a lot of money in options contracts, um, you got a whole lot of profit there. You would do the same thing. You would exercise half of them to ensure that they're hedged for. Um, and then you would sell the rest of the contracts for profit. And <laughs> if you're sitting at that $70 mark, you would want to then go ahead again and buy some deep, deep in the money calls. So if you're floating around 70, you would want to go back to the one that made it happen for you. You would buy quite a few more of the 40s. And then you could literally just buy, you know, just figure out how much money you have, divide it up, and you'd like to get, you know, uh, quite a few at 40, and then quite a few at 45, quite a few at 50, quite a few at 55, quite a few at 60. You see what I'm saying? You keep buying all these in the money contracts here and it keeps forcing hedging. It keeps forcing. Every time you buy one of those contracts, it forces 100 shares per contract to be hedged for. Um, and then the in-betweens, you just buy a couple, a couple in-between all the way up that's how you would ladder a short squeeze if if ever you were in that scenario um, one thing you would not want to do if you're sitting at you know say upper 60s or 70s if they expand the options chain and they double what the price is sitting at at that time the worst thing you could possibly do is sell all your contracts and then buy a bunch of those strike calls at 
you know, $140 or double whatever it's sitting at. Um, that's the worst thing you could do. Um, you, you just, uh, at the $40, you just got, the 40 has got you to 70. Having all that big fat open interest at 40 is what got you up to 70. So, to even think that somehow you're magically going to get to 140, 145 from 70 um, is crazy. You you don't want to do that. That would just be silly. The whole reason you got to 70 in the first place is because of in the money contracts that got hedged for and pushed the price of that shit up and there's no way to stop it um so if like hypothetically it dropped down from 70 because people didn't know how to properly ladder a a short squeeze and ladder your gamma squeeze um and you know say people bought all those 140 145 dollar call options and then you know the price is going down going down 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 and then you got some some contracts people didn't exercise or didn't sell because you know they wanted to fly higher and then all of a sudden you're dropping out of the money your contracts are falling below the strike price and now the market makers get to unhedge for those and drop the price even further with a quickness so say they push it down you know into the 30s or something like that because you were dicking around and thinking you were on top of the world and you know you got this short squeeze by the balls and whoever shorted is dumb and you're smart and they're ugly and you're pretty and uh now you're sitting there looking stupid with egg on your face um but that doesn't mean you're down and out, you know? You would just do exactly what you did to get there in the first place, to get to that 70. You would just repeat what you did here. So if you were to drop down to, say, like 35, um, at that point, you're going to want to buy, you know, like contracts that are $30. Uh <coughs> Obviously, anything under that 35 but particularly $30 would be the way to go. And if enough intelligent investors are taught this when they go to uh, brokerage school, then they would all be doing the same thing because they would know, hey, you know, I remember learning about this from, you know, old Doc Stocktopus back in the day. And uh, this is how you got to do this. I remember him saying that. Uh, you get a bunch of guys, like millions of investors that are buying, you know, a lot of these in the money strikes uh, for these options and they're going to fucking have to hedge for them. They're going to automatically have to hedge for those because you're buying them in the money and <clears throat> promise you they're not hedged for already. I keep trying to explain this because for some reason I am the only person on the planet that seems to know that 94% of option contracts do not get exercised. Market makers do not hedge for them unless they have to. And the only way they have to is when a certain percentage start getting exercised or wanting to get exercised or depending on the scenario. Um, there are some market makers that you know, they got rules, and when they get close, they'll hedge for them, depending on how many it is. Uh, but if it's a huge, huge open interest, they, they will be careful, because they don't want to be accused of manipulating the price by hedging for a contract that hasn't even reached its strike price yet. So, <laughs> you would have to force it, basically. You have to buy those contracts that they're just expecting to collect the premium on. If it goes up, you're just gonna sell it. That's what they're expecting. So they're not hedged for. They never really are. Like I said, there's only a 6% chance 
that you're actually going to exercise the contract. So there is no point in them going out and buying those shares. And then even if they have to, like I said, you know, you can just push the exercise button and then if it's not there, they get a quick alert and then they're like, oh shit, okay, oh, higher shares, boom, there we go. And next time you push it, it's exercised. Um, but that, my friends, is the proper way to ladder a squeeze if you ever found yourself in that position with, you know, stock XYZ or whatever it happens to be for you. Uh, that would be how you, how you do it. Um, and, uh, if people knew that prior to this hypothetical situation and hypothetical run up of stock XYZ, this would be over in hypothetical land. Would have squeezed it all the juice out of that shite. <coughs> the worst thing you can do when you're in a squeeze situation, especially if you're losing now, if you're getting beat down, is continually buying out of the money, even if it's a dollar or two out of the money contracts especially if you find yourself in a situation hypothetically where the market maker is actually owned by the hedge fund that is shorting the stock that you are talking about stock xyz and they're doing a bunch of illegal crazy shit to keep the price down Oh. And that's it for today's lesson in hypothetical Wall Street. Nothing that I said is financial advice or should be construed as financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I just call shit like I sees it. <laughs>